And basically, I ran it for a while, stopped it, went back and caught up on my WordPress and Google Plus where it was, and then did what it did, went back to the YouTube, ran it for more until it told me to do something, stopped it, went back and forth, and it apparently worked. Cool. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> YouTube. Who knew? Oh, my gosh. I just picked up so much information about YouTube last week. It just blew my mind. But yeah. Careful about YouTube. I mean, for obscure reason, I had to write a little you know, exercise about a vet who uh, was collecting horse semen. And so I went to YouTube. And whatever veterinarians charge, they deserve. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm guessing collecting horse semen is something you need to charge a premium for. I ain't doing it. No. <laughs> uh, no, just, no, not I never had a passion for that. No, no. no. <laughs> YouTube, though, is, uh, it, it really has become the top level of search. It's, we're actually seeing a shift, and this is a generational shift. This is part of the shift be between us and the fact that um, uh, older generations, my father's generation is about reading, reading, reading. I'm kind of in the middle. I want to read. I want to skim. I want fast. I want deep. Depends on what, what's going on. The millennials, they want video. They want it quick. They want concise. They don't want in-depth. They want to move, 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 right? So the millennials are turning to YouTube search more than... Google organic search. YouTube queries are 40% of all web queries. 40%. Wow. It's ridiculous. Walmart and YouTube have about similar numbers in some aspects. YouTube actually serves a larger portion of the market, but just to give you some scary numbers, and I was watching this guy, Mark Schuster, and I'll send you guys a link to watch this presentation because it'll blow your minds. Um, Walmart, 8% of all money spent in the United States is spent at a Walmart. That's how much? 8%. 8%, okay. Which doesn't seem like much, but that's 8% for one brand. Yeah. That's insane, right? Mm -hmm. They're doing about a, uh, I think I think Walmart's serving a billion customers a month, and this guy has great statistics. Google, Google, I'm sorry, YouTube, a billion unique visits a month. Unique visits. It's larger in scope than Walmart. It does more business than Walmart. <laughs> it's YouTube. It's a portion of Google, right? I mean, it's just. That's where all the money is. That's where everybody being on the web, producing content is one thing. We'll all have to keep producing content. But your ability to be in front of a camera and to produce video for your potential <laughs> client base is going to become standard, the norm. And, and what we're using right here is going to become probably the most used functionality in that regard for small business. So, so does that mean I have to uh, dye my hair? <laughs> what for? <laughs> so you mean, you know, uh, uh, you're thinking about just discussions about information. Is that what you're thinking, John, in terms of Any the most used? Uh, no, and no, anything. You, YouTube? I mean, oh, you mean the Hangouts? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. To, to be able to, not just discussion, people, we're producing television with Hangouts. Right. Right? Tell, you know, not just Hangouts. Um, when you guys are, when we're done with this, you guys want to look up something crazy, look up Maker Studios. Maker Studios is this company owned by Mark Schuster, who I just found, and now I'm like a big fanboy of him. They are the first full-fledged, 100% web production facility for video. Um, Time Warner gave them millions of dollars as a backing. Some other big company in France gave them money. Uh, they are basically collecting talent creating web television, and it's all on YouTube. It's all YouTube. And their, mon their, their money model is based on that. They're bringing sponsorships in, consumer product goods. It's all that stuff I was talking about. But this guy, what's interesting is that he'll, if, if you want your show to, if, if you want your show to get picked up, 
all you have to do is show them how many views per month you get. Yeah. That's it. If you have, you know, and he has different levels, but if you've got 50,000 views a month for your show, you'll get picked up. And once they pick you up, they market you because they want to make money off of you. Because the multi-channel network that you'll see when this guy talks about it, the profit margin isn't very high. So it's not about the high margin, it's about volume margin, which you can do with YouTube. So 50,000 views a month is kind of being set as the standard for a program being picked up by a bigger box and pushed out in web. I mean, the levels are already set. Doesn't mean you can't create your own show, market your own show, get 40,000 views a month, and love what happens with your business. It just means that this guy set a marker, right? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's very interesting. Say the name of that site again. Makers? Makers Studios. Makers Studios. Dot com. And everything about that site is brilliant. The writing, the creativity. I, I go there, have a fun time, look at some of the stuff, look at the shows that they've got going on. It's, it, it's obvious that they're putting value into this, money into this, writing into it. He, he said a beautiful statement that I love. He said, it's about the quality of the content and the personalities. The production value can be lower because it's the web. So don't worry about producing it like a mega thing. Worry about the quality of the content and the personalities. Period. The end. Right? So changing the face of what we can do in here. I love it, love it, love it. But let's start with... Uh, wait a well, second. Wait, wait. Time out. Time yes. out. Uh, yes. Well, you just said quality of content and the personality, but that's true for just plain old uh, authorship on Google+. Plus. The, but the personality is different, right? The personality is different, but you still have to have a personality. You still have to have a personality, but your ability to bring that personality in words is all content on the web, right? Right, of course. Yeah, it's a different medium. There's no doubt about it. But personality, I think, is still, you know, really important. It's huge. It's huge. It's just that I guess my statement would be, your ability to write with a personality does not guarantee your ability to be in front of a camera with that personality. Oh, oh, definitely, most, most assuredly. Right, and that, that's all I'm saying is that it comes down to a different kind of personality. And if you're the writer for the show, you may need to get a personality to, you know, yeah. see what I'm saying? That's yeah. just something we all have to think about. Everybody, everybody with a lot of, everybody with enough confidence to try it is going to think they're going to be great at it, and that's where we're going to run into the same issue that we've always seen, where there will be those who say they're awesome, but they have no viewers because they're not, right? right. <laughs> so it's just recognizing our own our own abilities. Like, I am not a writer. It took me a long time to recognize it. I can write, but I am definitely not a passionate writer. It's not my medium. So... What? What? What do you mean by that? Why are you not a writer? You may be writing nonfiction. You might be writing copy, but you're still a writer. No, no, no. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I yeah. write a lot. I've, I've written a lot of content. I write contracts. I write blogs. But my ability to impart information, my best medium is my voice. It's not writing. It's not my words on paper. So, and and Blythe was a perfect example of this. The writing, the, my blog post, if you go look at part of the internet design and you go look at the old blog post, it's my writing. If you look at the, le the latest four, that's Blythe who listened to me and then wrote it down in her own words. Okay? Yeah. It's, Blythe and I would do an hour long session. I'd fill her brain. She turns it into blogs. Her work, her words make me sound awesome. So much better than I could make me sound. Right? So. Okay. Fair Thank enough. God for Blythe. I mean, you know, that's that that's that's the difference. Where you could give me your words, I could speak them really well. You know. <laughs> so it's just, my whole point about that is that you guys are going to have to discover for yourselves: Am I suited for this TV thing or not? You know, if not, how do I work with other people with it? What do I do? What do I do with this medium for my own business? Right. Mm -hmm. Just something we have to ponder. Uh, the you may not need to get involved with YouTube really heavily for another six months a year. Just know that it is becoming where everything goes. The amount of time, 
yeah, the amount of time we spend now in search will be spent in YouTube search. Uh, and as your audience changes, that will change as well. More questions, feelings, thoughts on that? I see furrowed brows. Well, it's a little scary having to move to video. <laughs> that was yeah. scary getting this far. Yeah, and it's not as um, it's a it's a linear. It's still linear. I mean, if I want to find out how to frost Jim's hair, woo, Jim, I'm going to frost your hair. Um, you know, somebody, I'm going to watch this little Jim, you, Jim. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to put highlights in your hair. Okie dokie. Is that all right? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. So I want to watch this video about how to frost hair. And so I still, even though I can, you know, it's still a linear format, um, even though I can pop in and out. So there is some, you know, there is some limitations in terms of scanning ability. I mean, still with a, with a printed post or a blog, I can scan and go quick. True. I mean, that's very true. And, and so... <sighs> I'm not saying we're all switching from words to video. And it's not just video. It's just you have to keep in mind the medium. It's the same message that I was giving earlier about it's not just words, it's words and images and formatting between the words and things to make it more interesting than just words. Right? That's that's really what it's coming down to. When we talk about YouTube and video, it doesn't necessarily have to be your face either. It can be a slide presentation, you could just be going through a presentation in Google Doc and talking behind it, right? Yeah. Um, it, you could start off with podcasting. Write the stuff and then read it to people with a good microphone. Okay. I mean, I've been toying around with that too. Um, so there's ways to ease ourselves into this. And again, I'm not suggesting that as writers we're going to need to ditch the written word and move over to film. I'm just saying we need to adapt so that we can present using these these tools. That's all, right? That that we have to we have to think we can't. What I what I don't want to do is go back. That ah, I have to do that, right? I don't want to do it. Therefore, it's not important. And that's what a lot of us do with a lot. You know, we we know understanding where you guys fit in the realm of the world today. That words will never cease to be the most important aspect of the web. Even when video becomes the norm, there will need to be scripts and transcripts and words to deal with that, right? So words are never going to die. We just have to stay up abreast of the technology involved. That's all. That's all I'm really saying. All right. So, John, I'm going to be doing a five-hour workshop or teaching uh, a week from Saturday. Cool. From tomorrow in the Beaverton area. Uh, on the listing skill stuff, counseling skills, that sort of thing that I do, uh, what are the kinds of things I should think about to kind of get myself ready to eventually record that? We've had a few shots where people had little cheapy machines and have done a little recording, but the sound hasn't been good. You know, it, it really hasn't worked out. Uh, but how how do I can how do I make use of something that is that long? Do I have to break it up in shorter segments? Um, so, okay, so first of all, it's five hours, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> what kind of a do, do you have a, a decent uh, camcorder? Uh, no, not iPhone is the limit that I have right now. Okay, this is in Beaverton, right? Yes. Hmm. I may just figure out a way to come down here and record it for you or something. Um, it what? I mean, I have all the base equipment. Right? Yeah. What I mean, to get ready to do something like that, here's what you need. You have a laptop, that's fine. You can use the webcam you're using right now, right? Mm -hmm. and you could record it as a Hangout on Air if you wanted to, although you lose after an hour, you have to shut it down and start it over. Sure. My guess is you're not doing five hours like, I mean, you're stopping, right? Yes, yes. Well, and we do we do practice stuff in there that you probably wouldn't record all of, or would edit out that sort of thing. Okay. And there are certainly, I hate to admit it, but there's certainly dead times stuff that I say that we can probably avoid or ignore. 
That's all right. You want to get so so you want to get the whole thing recorded anyway. So yeah. the 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 basic setup is a camcorder that will. Uh, uh, this is about four hundred bucks. All right. Okay. You can find these the the, the four hundred to five hundred dollar price point right now is what you're looking for. Yeah. I got to look at the newest models, but there's there's a couple things. One, you want to make sure they're 1080 HD cameras. 1080 1080p HD. Right. Most of the prosumer cameras are 1080p, so you know they all should be that at this point. Okay. That's an HD camera. You want one that has uh, a, a real, an actual optical zoom. Not just a digital zoom, if possible. Yeah. Um, this one has some kind of a zoom. I think this one has a little bit of both. Um, this one also doubles as a camera, so I now use this as my regular camera. It's an 8.9 megapixel, sure. so you know whatever. Uh, the other thing you want is to make sure it has audio input so that you can take a mic in. Okay. okay. And, and again, once you hit that $400 mark, they generally do. But the big thing that's out right now is the ability to stream from this. So if you can find it, I need to look for the same thing. There's, there's, my model doesn't do it. But there are versions of these now where I can plug it in USB to my laptop. The laptop will recognize this as a webcam, and then I can use this for the Hangout. I see. I'll try to find the right models and send you guys the links, but that's what that's the the new era of these, and that's what everybody needs. Right. Okay. Uh, Jim. Yeah. The I'm here in the Beaverton area, and our local library, Cedar Mill Community Library, actually has uh, little packages you can check out. One's a music recording setup. Another one is a sort of a video recording setup. So you might be able to check one out of the library, play with it, and get you know get used to some yeah. of the features before you put hard cash down. There you go. Okay. That's a great idea. The Cedar Mill Library? The Cedar Mill Community Library has it. I'm sure Beaverton Library has the probably more. Right. You okay. guys got a much bigger library than we do. So what you want to do, if you're going to record that much time, the easiest way to do it is to set up a tripod somewhere that captures the whole room, right? Yeah. Or captures you, most importantly. I mean, it, again, it's going to depend on what you want to do. If the important part is to catch you presenting, mm -hmm. right, and the slides, then you set it up for that. If you can have a minion there to move camera and zoom and stuff, then you can obviously do a lot more, right? Sure. Um, what you need, though, is a camera that either has enough space in its um, SD card, right? Yeah. To hold all the stuff, or like this one, I can direct feed it to a a, a disk drive, so it'll do USB into a, a USB drive, external hard drive, yeah, and store there. Okay. Um, if you're recording in 1080p, which you need to, you should. Okay. If you're recording at the highest setting, you're going to gobble through gigabytes of data. Okay. Which means, I mean, literally a a 32 gigabyte sand uh, uh, disk for this, or you know, uh, SD yeah. card, yeah, could probably hold five hours of data. You'll have to look at the the specs on that, all right? Um, so it's your choice. You can either buy a card that's large enough with your your camera, or a cable and run it to an external drive. But the one thing you're going to want to make sure is that you have enough space to record without yeah. having to dump to a device in the middle. Okay. This was my problem with Willamette Writers Conference. I didn't have enough space, and so I couldn't record everything because I just ran out of space. And it takes a long time to download from here to your machine. Okay. All right. So enough space to record everything you got going on. And really, I mean, I can go buy another SD card and make this have enough space. They're not that expensive these days. No. Yeah. You know. Um, Outside of, the, I mean, literally all you need then is the camera, a, a decent microphone. Uh, there's a couple different ways to go there. Lavalier mic is the standard where it's just a long, 20-foot long cord, and you 
attach it to your collar. Okay? Yeah. But then you're kind of restricted, and yeah. if the camera's in the back of the conference room and you're in the front, that's not going to fly. Yeah. So the next best thing is to get a camera that that either includes a decent mic attachment, right, or get yourself a uh, good condenser mic and a minimal little mixer board so that you can go from the microphone that's at the front with you through a little board and then into your camera, right? And that's like, it's a little fancier, but it gives you a lot more control, right? Um, you, you know, you can do multiple mics if you need to, but this way you can put the mic in the front of the room, you can put the camera in the back of the room and just have a cord going between the two. Yeah. You know, and the, and I don't know what the the library may that may be part of their system. No, no. But I would I would, you know if I can come out there is it this next Saturday? Yes, the twelfth. Twelfth. Okay. What time? Uh, nine to three. All right. I may I may come out there like set you up with the camera and the tripod and my little uh, mixer and let you just. Run it, right? Let it run, sure. See, see how it goes, okay? Um, let me let me talk to the GF and see if that's going to work. Uh, okay. Always got to ask permission. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, we I could show you that little setup, and then and my setup is ancient, right? So it's big and clunky. Yeah. Um, other than the camera, what you'll end up getting is all tiny and small, and it'll fit in a little backpack, literally. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, overall cost. Seven. Probably between seven and eight hundred bucks. The camera is the largest chunk. Yeah. Right. Uh, With uh, what? Let's say you record the f the five hours, and I can work with that and break it up in segments and that sort of thing on the on the computer. When 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 you're ready to when we're at that point, you'll get a program called ScreenFlow. Okay. ScreenFlow is uh, for Mac. I mean, I think they make a Windows version, but I, I like it uh, yeah. uh, it's for Mac. It's a hundred bucks, mm -hmm. and it is. It's what I use. I do all my videos with it, and you know, it does a lot more than I do. I just don't have time to do all the fancy stuff. Yeah. But it'll let you do some crazy, crazy things. It's really easy to work with, so it's not like Final Cut Pro where you're like, oh my god, this interface is you know, yeah. nine thousand things to click on. Um, okay. So yeah, and I and I can. All of this stuff, I'm like thinking of building into the later Wise programs. So <laughs> this would be good to just work with you on it anyway. But uh, laptop, screen flow, camera, good microphone, little mixer board, tripod, enough storage space, and then the last piece, but most important piece, is lighting. All right. Yeah, I think probably the lighting in that room is not great. So. The most cameras that you buy around the four to five hundred dollar range are going to come with what's called a low lux option. Mm -hmm. If it has low lux, you're in good shape. All you do is hit record in low light, and it it takes care of it. It'll backlight everything and make it pretty. Okay. okay. Uh, so I mean, for a presentation like here's me live talking, that'll be fine. Yeah. I always bring though, and and I'll show you some of the. Here, these are. Uh, Let me unplug this guy. Okay. This is example light one. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is basically a four foot two tube fluorescent light from Lowe's. Uh huh. The bulbs are the uh, bright, the, the cool bright, so the 56 or 5700 Kelvin. Bulbs. Okay. okay. You want you you never want to mix light, so you use these because this is outdoor light, and you, you every light. I mean, you can't control what's in the room, but most conference rooms are using these anyway. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so this is good. I have two of these, and these are what basically blast light on me or on a green screen. Okay. These are these are nice as, as long as they're going to be in, in you know back far and just blasting light on you. Mm -hmm. You can easily put parchment paper on the front of it 
as a diffuser. Parchment paper is like the poor man's diffuser. Yeah. Sure. The other thing, let me see if I have another one. Um, oh, right here. So here, and the parchment paper is off. So this is example number two. This is Lowe's for $7.99, maybe $6.99. And it's just a 100 watt, 57K bulb in there. Yeah. Parchment paper that goes over the front is a diffuser. Closed pins to keep it on the thing. <laughs> this is a low budget operation. What? That's a low budget operation. Absolutely. I mean, this is, you know, this is what lights my room in here when I shoot video here. Yeah. And, you know, you, you can, on Amazon, I think there's a set of two lights with umbrella diffusers and stands. Basically, these with a prettier cover yeah. for like 35 bucks. So if you've got the 35 bucks to blow, just buy the Amazon two diffuser set and be done with that, right? Sure. I'm just saying, you know, for bottom of the, you know, if we're scraping nickels, I got six of these things and they covered me. <laughs> oh. So. Uh, that's <clears throat> a little info there. Um, and so there, there's there's a little, little there, what you need to do for video. <laughs> well. Yeah, if we could give give it a try Saturday, uh, see see what if that would work for you. Uh, I, so you're saying we could just set it up and let it run? Yeah. And and you wouldn't have to stay there. No, and, and you know I could meet you there in the morning. Yeah. Um, we've got some other stuff going on in the afternoon, so you know, and I'd pick it up Sunday or whenever we hook up. Well, not a big deal. So. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. So uh, cool. Any other? What's next, guys? Well, I got a general question, and it has to do with I was looking at uh, Market Market Samurai, and I went through a bunch of their videos. And, and now, granted, they're they're um, directed towards businesses, and they want to uh, get you know uh, businesses and traffic and people go on their website and buy money. And how I'm just trying to. Uh, get a sense of how this would fit with a writer who's uh, trying to develop a blog and a following just to get his name uh, established as someone who's not full of shit, to excuse the language, right. as far as, say, going back and writing about history. So that's the general question. I'd like to see what you say and what the other, uh, the other uh, students here Thinking where they're coming from, what with what they want to do with the web and marketing. I'm, I'm very curious about what everybody else is doing too. I was just going to ask Kathleen. So, where are you at on your keyword research, Kathleen, or have you started? I haven't started. Um, Walt has jumped ahead, leapfrogged ahead of uh, us and me. Uh, I'm still working on week three, and I'm doing some things that you and I talked in the one-on-one -on -one regarding okay. adding uh, circles, and um, I'm also uh, starting to do the three things that we talked about and you talked about when the uh, WTF with Bobby Joe, which is to do the comments, to the plus one, and do the reshare. So I just started doing that this week. Good. I'm trying to do it on a routine and regular basis. And like anything that you start, it takes a little bit uh, longer to gear up. Sure. So um, I've added probably, oh golly, I can't remember how many people I've added in my shared circles, but probably about, is that the right word? I can't remember. But you know what I mean. Um, yeah. um, I don't know how many. I've added about four or six. I can't remember. Good. So Good. yeah, it's paying off because the number of people following me has increased dramatically. But, so, um, so are, okay. are, you adding, are you adding shared circles? You mean when you, you're adding those big shared circles? Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. that's what you told me to do in our one-on-one. -on -one. Right. Right. So okay. what Kathleen's talking about, guys, is uh, the shared shared circle database, which you probably haven't gotten to. Um, it's a way to really grow your fans rapidly. But when you do it, you have to uh, you have to go in there and, and uh, uh, react, and that's what Kathleen's been taking her time doing is engaging with all these new people. Um, right, and, 
and, and I, it's uh, actually was an extra credit on um, I don't know week three, day four, something like that. Yes. Yes. FYI. Well, every, we'll all do it. Everybody will get. We'll get. We'll add a few shared circles. You just chose to do the extra credit and do it early. So, um, which is all, which is awesome. So now Walt. So so this is actually a great spot because Walt's the only one at the key, at the keyword research spot. So I, this is great because we've had a massive shakeup in keywords. Um, thanks to Hummingbird, thanks to Google shutting down the um, the, or the not provided is now 100%. Um, which all these things sounds really weird, but from the SEO world, it was like holy crap, what did Google do? Okay, um, it really wasn't that devastating to people that know what they're doing, but it was certainly devastating to those who did not and who call themselves SEO people. Um, so in terms of answering your question about keyword space, what you're going to do is we're going we're to look for a few terms that you can write about, write around. All right? y your book is unique, so we have, to, we have to pick some general terms so that you can be an authority around those terms, right? So we talked about, I mean, you know, I know the premise of your book. We got some people, they end up going back in time to the Middle Ages, and they're from, I can't remember if they're from the 60s or from the modern era, but it's, it's something along those lines, right? Today, yeah. Okay, okay. So something very similar to Hot Tub Time Machine in my mind, except we're going back to the Middle Ages, all right? And I want to think that generalized, that loose. Okay, because as an author, we can go, my literary masterpiece doesn't have shit to do with Hot Tub Time Machine. You're absolutely right. But the same people that went, that paid to watch that film will pay to read your book. Right. We're, we're thinking of, uh, on a consumer mentality, not a writer's mentality. <laughs> right? like, so we have to open those buckets up. This is great crossover between you, Kathleen, and what Walt's going on. Right. You, you, you guys have different yet very similar buckets to address. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean. But, uh, but you know, these sure circles, well, we'll see. I mean, I mean, you know, I'm doing it because you told me to. But um, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not all the way, you know, I don't see the end game yet. I mean, I see the point, but I don't see how it's going to work out for me. I don't see the end game for me. Does that make sense? The, the end game of, of working this, you mean? Yeah, I understand. I'm growing. I'm growing. Uh, I'm growing uh, people, um, but we'll see how that works out. I know. I know. Keep yeah. producing the content. It's good. It'll. You'll, you'll see it. You, it'll, your eyes will go bing, and you'll go, oh shit. Okay, I get it. Yeah. No it'll problem. Happen. All right. Yeah. A so, question here. Yes. Yeah, Kathleen, what are you? What's your era that you're writing about? Is that your tail there, Walt? <laughs> That's my tail, yeah. <laughs> One of my nuisance cats here. <laughs> uh, they like to uh, bug me when I'm sitting here. Yeah, you're fair game. I'm yeah. writing in, uh, my book is, is historical fiction for women set in ancient Rome. Well, what, what era again? Rome? Rome. Oh, okay, so you're minus 500 to plus 500 uh, years. I mean, uh, Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So well, cool. I just I just saw the Pantheon last week. I was um, you know. Oh yeah. There. Fabulous. You look up? Pardon? You looked up? Is it Oculus? I don't think I did that. Oh, oh, I did. oh my god, you didn't look up. Oh I I was saw I I don't even remember what I saw, quite honestly. It was too many things. I had no idea you were there, and what is this Oculus you speak of? It's yeah, the, it's the hole in the ceiling. Oh, that's for the uh, the oh the that one, yeah. Okay. I was well, the fair, you know. the, pa the Pantheon has the big hole in the middle and all the yeah, yeah. and yeah. the drainage holes in the floor. Got it. Oh, I'm so jealous. I'm so jealous. So no, you guys, a picture, John, your right? dad said that you were there when you were. Uh, in vitro. <laughs> when you're in the womb. <laughs> what? Your dad, he, uh, dad told me or posted to me that you were there when, while you were in the womb. Was I really? <laughs> I didn't see that. Doesn't surprise me. 
Yeah, yeah. The, my my parents had fun all over Europe before I was born, right? Yeah. What does that say? <laughs> yeah, I know. I, no, no. You don't. You don't even know the worst of it. My dad was living in Germany as an officer, driving a Carmen Ghia around. Uh, uh, knocks up my mom. She tells him to sell the Carmen Ghia so they can get a safe car for the kid, right? Uh, so, yeah. Instead oh, of saying that, it, you know. <sighs> I could have been driving that thing around at 16. Yeah. But no. You've been way cooler. <laughs> anyway. Don, while, while people are hurting you here, I'd like to add to the mix. Sally and I have sat on top of the Marriott Hotel in Athens in, in the evenings and looked at the Parthenon and the lights, all those beautiful lighted things. Absolutely w wonderful. Wow. I, so, someday... Lori and I will get over to Europe and yeah. look at it. Well, you're you're a kid yet. You know you got time. <laughs> I've been to Ireland. I was only there for ten days, so <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, Ireland blew me away, and I did not want to leave. And it's very much like Portland, actually. Um, He's good beer, right? What? Good beer. Yeah, actually, no. Here's the thing: not a lot of options for beer. Oh, Guinness. Guinness, Guinness Smithwick's. Are the Guinness is their heavy beer, Smithwick's is their light beer, and then you have Coors and Bud, right? It, that's bec and they only have those to for the tourists. I mean, Irish drink whiskey. <laughs> Hell yeah! Oh, sorry. <laughs> anyway, so uh, back to the keyword question. So what I really want to what I really want to do with keywords, Walt, is look for some really juicy terms that you can just keep writing about. So if I find something like something around the word medieval, if I find something around the word historical fiction, find something around the word time travel, I don't know what I'm going to be looking for and you're not sure what you're looking for yet. We're really just going to dive down some seeds so we can pull out three or four juicy terms and then you're just going to start writing around that space. Okay. Literally finding blog posts about that information, memes about that stuff, anything that cross-pollinates with what Kathleen's got going on. It's you're going to make yourself an authority about that space by just producing tomes of content. That content doesn't have to be words necessarily. It doesn't have to be detailed, hardcore written information about your stuff. It could be uh, that, that thing I showed you the other day, Kathleen, that was great. Um, uh, this is where television shows come in, Walt, and this is why we're going after TV, because the, as far as the consumer is concerned, what they see on TV is how it was, right? Rome, that's how it was. Game of Thrones, that's how the black, you know, that's how the, the Dark Ages were, as, as far as everybody's concerned. It's like, oh, God, you have no idea. But if you want to think it's Game of Thrones, no problem, right? Yeah. So we, we need to, uh, what we're going to do to sell your books is to say, look, what I'm writing about is as cool as this over here, or this over here, or this stuff over here. It has to do with this over here. The same stuff you're already watching. Right? The same stuff you're already interested in. So if you can find a Game of Thrones meme, Walt, or find one, you know, there's a Game of Thrones image that's been going around forever, and it's like uh, uh, the, 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 the king that got killed early off in the show, and uh, it is, it, he says, like, it is no simple matter to just... One does not simply walk into Mordor or something like that. It's just it's, it's, it's some some loose statement, and people have taken that same picture and written hundreds of different words to go with it. Everybody knows the image. It's the image that's been branded. The words you put on it are your own. And if you put words on it that people find funny or humorous to go with this branded image, then it gets reshared. Even if it doesn't get reshared, people will associate you with that branded image and what you're trying to get them to understand. So in a lot of ways, a good portion of your content wall should be images with few words, right? just memes, resharing of, and, and, and here I'm going all over the place, so I'm just going to hit different buckets. Find television-based, and this is for everybody. For, for all your markets, find television-based figures, you know, television characters that are well-known, that have quotes that they've said that are relevant to what you're talking about. 
make a make a meme picture with that quote and a profile of that television person and post it. You want to go a step farther? Write something about it. Ask an engagement question, and then post it with the picture. Right? The the Adama thing. You you guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah, let but shows an example. Florida. Too. Let me shoot you an example. Let me find one here real quick. Shouldn't take me two seconds. That Adama one was beautiful. Hey, Jim. Yes. Right now, with the with what you with the, with the book you got, yeah. are there any television shows right now that you think represent what you're talking about? Even close hint at it all. Most most of them, the problems that develop between the characters and the shows are because they don't do the stuff in my book. That's awesome. Yeah. So if you do you watch do you watch any television shows? <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Can you just whatever they are? Name name me one of them that you watch that you're, you you really like. Oh. We watched Bones and uh, uh, Sherlock, not Sherlock, but uh, Elementary. Elementary. I love them both. Okay, yeah. let's let's start with Bones. Okay, if if you if you start a consistent weekly post about and and come up with a title for it, the the bones of the relationship or. Picking the bones really shy. I don't know. Come up, come up with some catchy title, okay? So that it's a regularly occurring post where you review the show or a portion of the show with a screenshot and and you and you capture a statement that was made. Right? Think about how I, I was going to cuss a lot. There's there's cuss words wanting to come out of my mouth about how cool this is. You can all do this with whatever show is going on. Yeah. Find the show as soon as it airs. And you've watched it, or middle of watching it. Pause it when something hits you. Like I can work with that. Right? Mm -hmm. Sure. Get, get that statement. Take a screenshot. Post a post about it. Do this every week and get a discussion going about the relationship going on between Bones and 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 uh, uh, Steely and what they did and how your book or how you would have resolved it. However, you you know what I'm saying? Yes, got it. That's that's good stuff. Okay, if I can ask Jim, what are you writing about? In what era? Uh, my, my era is is current, essentially. Uh, it's relationship. It's why don't we listen better? Counseling and communication skills. Okay. You know, how do you resolve conflict? And how it sort of models how people get upset. Their brains go out of whack, uh, and then the things that come out of their mouth are not useful. You know, and how do you listen to folks who are upset and not being, making sense? Help them calm down. Think straighter. You know how for couples to get along better. Cool. Yep. And my current book is already out, and I'm working on one now that will be a version of that targeted at couples. Okay. Um, and what occurs to me is that that uh, series that where a guy interviewed uh, actors in Hollywood for for the uh, New York a New York acting school. Oh, the, the, the behind, uh, inside the actor's studio or whatever. That's behind. the one, yeah. 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 You know, one of the big pains in my life is that I didn't, almost every actor talked about the value of listening, you know, in preparing for playing the roles that they do. Right. And, you know, I, we watched practically all of those that didn't take notes and found that was a really big mistake. Right. Yeah, and, and I think I saw that they're they're doing a, a series again, or do, doing repeats of those. So I, that's one of the things we've got on the schedule to kind of go find. Great, great. I mean, that's any, any that's as as well. Any nuggets that come out of any of those actors where you can grab it and put the shot up there, right? Yep. In yep. other words, I mean, do you see what I've got up on my screen right now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. This is the Commander Adama thing. Somebody just put this together. They grabbed a script, a picture of him, photoshopped him out, dropped it on a backboard, and dropped this text in here. Now, that may be a little fancy, but you can certainly, 
you know, you could either do this yourself, you guys can do this yourself and play with it. Um, Skitch, actually, uh, Skitch will let you add more of a canvas. There are, there are, there are tools in different uh, systems that will automatically, like, lasso around the guy and then remove the background for you. But even if you don't know how to do that, you know you can do very simple ways, and you can go to meme sites that already have the pictures ready for you, and all you have to do is bring it into Plus and add your words. Sure. So whatever it is, screenshot, whatever, you can also do... Um, there are meme generators that do animated GIFs out of uh, YouTube. So if you find... Uh, I was just playing with this. This might be perfect for, for the television show, Jim. Okay. You can so you you load up. It, you have to find the show. So you assume that Bones gets loaded up onto YouTube at some point, right? Sure. You find the YouTube video. You go to this. You load the video link into um. You load the video link into this the site, mm -hmm. and it pulls the YouTube video up. You find the little section where they're talking, right? Yeah and block out whatever it is, five, six seconds, and then you add the words in the closed caption. And then it just cycles through, right? You've seen these come through, right? Sure. And plus, so it's it, they give you, it's like a free place. You go there, you add the words. It's, it's as easy as, as adding words to a picture in a plus post. Mm -hmm. So you could do that, too. Like, here's the clip from Bones. There's the words. There's what it says. I post it. It's an animated thing, which means people are going to look at it. And I'm going to write a summary and talk about it. Sure. So that's one one suggestion. Are you thinking about that for for me for Rome, the HBO series for Rome too? Anybody? I'm just I'm just throwing out. So anytime I throw these things out, they're for everybody. Whoever wants to, you know, you've already you're already working a path, Kathleen. Work work well, that path. Well, 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 I'm sorry. My path is right now adding those shared circles. Well, but, right, but I mean, you. We also had talked about you finding scenes from Rome, putting those those statements on them, right? Okay. All right. No, no, no. Um, you told me to hold off on that, so I did. Oh. Um. Right. I, I don't remember. Why? Why did we hold off? Was I just being because crazy? Because I was doing the shared circles and doing the reshare and all that other stuff, not creating original content that twenty percent, uh, but working on the eighty percent. So, so do the yeah, do absolutely right. Do the do the shared circles and stuff. You can get these images ready, though, right? Okay. So start building your logs. Start loading them into Google Docs, uh, uh, or you know, into your into, or into your photos, so that when you're ready, you can just blam one a day, and you don't have to take any time, right? Cool. Okay. All right. So that's one what idea. What kind I of uh, okay. copyright issues can we get? Cool. Uh oh, what happened? Say that again, Walt. Okay. How about copyright issues? Uh, okay. I'm breaking up. Yeah, you were a little bit. Things were happening here. We might need to adjust bandwidth. The uh, audio is kind of. I'm breaking up. Yeah, copyright issues. I think we have a, we have some delays, everybody. It's all silent right now. Yeah, I know. We're just. We, Kathleen, so you were finishing your okay. statement. Yes, just go ahead and start creating those memes, those backlogs, okay? Okay, all right. Oh, Walt, we're getting uh, feedback in your... That's what's happening right now, Walt. we got feedback coming into your speakers. And you may need to adjust your bandwidth. Looks like you're froze. Kathleen, are you froze? Yep. I'm alive. Jim, Jim, you're there. Okay. So, oh, oh, we lost Walt. Shit. All right. I want you guys to know it's not the lo it, it isn't his white hair that is the reason we lost him. <laughs> that's, that's not it. I'm sure it's not. His hair. <laughs> so, uh, oh, let's see. I have a couple questions. I have a couple questions. Please. Uh, Google Drive. Uh, when we store things in the in in the drive, they're not on the computer. So when we aren't don't have access to the internet, uh, we don't have access to them. That's is that 
correct? It's correct, except there is a way to work on those offline. So I would look look for a setting or look in the Chrome store. I think it's just a little software piece that you can install that, that allows you to manipulate those documents offline. Okay. And, and it's, you know, it's not robust like Word because it's just dealing with the basics of what you can do with the docs. But I, I think Google created a, uh, an offline function for that. Okay. Um, I know that on my... I know that on my Android device, I can download a doc for offline use. And then I can open it up and work with it. And it's, it's just using the Android system. So I know we can do it with Chrome. Right. So that means that means everything I put on on Google Docs would would have to also be on the computer. If you want to be able to access it offline. Okay. okay. I, I generally don't. I mean, yeah. if it's if if you guys need to, if it's like, well, here's what I'm my suggestion: keep keep the essentials offline, right? Yeah. But don't start cluttering up your back and forth because. There's so much more information that we'll be storing on the web that you really don't need to access. <laughs> you know what I mean? Got it. Sure. And it, and it's the other reason why I didn't suggest installing the um, the drive connect the syncing mechanism. Yeah. Right. Um, because then everything that goes up there will have a local copy, and your hard drive will get filled. Right? Yeah. Got it. Okay. Another question about uh, when I went on. In the circle business, and and hooked up with uh, with a hundred writers, uh, half a dozen of those have responded and uh, accepted the connection. Do I put those in a separate circle then to keep them distinct from the larger one? You you can if you want. My my suggestion right now is to just wait, just just collect them. Okay. Okay. If if you're if if the people that have added you back, yeah, you know when I first started doing this, when I first started gathering people before I started doing the bulking, yeah, um, I would look at each one just really quick, and and in the interface now you you should be able to just like hover over their name and see their information. Yes. Um, if they're a big influencer, like if they've added you back and you see that they've got several thousand followers already or above, right? Yeah. I would take the time to say something to them. Okay. Now, okay. You know, I would be like, "Hey, man, thanks for having me back." If they've got five thousand plus, you're you're kissing their ass, right? You're like, "Wow, you added me back. This is awesome." Blah blah. Okay. Okay. And then and and so so literally like if it's a five thousand plus person, I would go to their profile, plus a few things, make a few comments to say, "Hey, I recognize that you added me back, and that meant a lot to me." Right. Okay. Okay. Um, with with big big names, I literally fall over backwards. When Mark Traphagen added me, I wrote him a private note and just said, "So honored, speechless," and then left like the line for cuss words because I know that he's a preacher or ex preacher, and I didn't want to offend him. So I didn't even say the cuss words. I just yeah. left them there, you know, yeah. okay. in excitement. So I, I guess what I'm trying to impart there is, as creative as you can be. Mm -hmm. Got it. In an in an escalating scale of value, right? Okay, got it. So okay, and and uh, the little down the road, even more valuable is when somebody of huge value adds you back. Yeah, you can actually make that a public announcement and go, "Wow!" Right? And 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 what'll happen is you make that public announcement. I can't believe this happened. This person's incredible. And then you, what you're doing is you roll it into, if you don't know who this person is, you need to find out. Right? Yeah. So what you do is by announcing that you've been made important enough to be followed, you bring them a whole bunch of new people. I see. Okay, so sure. uh, wait a second now, not so fast. Um, so when I write to them and say, uh, thanks for adding me back, or um, I'm going to, that'll be shared privately. Is that right? Well, yeah, I mean, you could you could all you could go to their their profile and you could make a comment on their post and add that information. 
so that other people could see it, or you could you could write them privately. Wow, dude, add me back. Thank you so much. Either way, right? Okay, it doesn't matter which way. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it, here's here's the mindset I want you to be in, Kathleen. Is there an advantage to one way or the other? If you can see an advantage, do it that way. If not, just do it. Okay. Do it privately. Okay. I'm always looking for a better PR advantage. Right? Okay. And I'm not necessarily looking for a better PR advantage for me. It's like, is there a way I can do this that will make it more valuable for them so that I have more leverage out of this? Yeah, though, you know, I'm still a little puppy, uh, to quote uh, the, the, one of those posts last week. Um, so there's, you know, I don't see how, what's the advantage of doing it publicly for, you know, wow, another right. person added. There, there generally isn't. Right. Yeah. There, there generally isn't. You're not going to yeah. share with the public that you're thanking somebody for adding them. Right. right. Okay. In a shared circle, when you are added to a shared circle, you go to the call the comment thread, and everybody who's been added says thank you very much. So yes, I've seen that. In a sense, it's public, but it's just part of the comment thread, right? So, yeah. Just comment. Hey, Walt. I'm back. I don't know what happened, but uh, uh, it knocked me off of the, the Hangout and knocked me out of email, too. Kind of weird. Yeah, Google's, um, just so you guys all know, the last several weeks, Google has been all up in their shit with bad code. I mean, the developer community is complaining about it. They've been updating and changing things, and so everything's working a little unstable. Hangouts have been unstable. YouTube live stream has been unstable. It's just been messy. So it's just Google. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, wait, don't move on yet. Okay, so somebody with uh, 5,000 followers, I'm going to think, right? But uh, so how about somebody with 1,000 followers? Well, again, you're again, you're playing it by ear. If you see yeah. that come through, if they, if you get ten people that just added you and you're looking at their profiles real quick and you see that all of them are above a thousand, right? I mean, at that point I'd be like, you know, whatever. Go, go, where are they all? Is it worth saying something to them? I mean, this is, this is okay. kind of, again, at the beginning I said thanks to everybody, right? Oh. When when I when I had when I had too many people or when it happened so often that I couldn't say thanks anymore and they just kept running by, then I would just make bulk statements. I would just make a public. I just want to say I got ten new followers. I can't thank you enough. You guys are all awesome. And then I would take the time to maybe mention them. Here they are. This guy. This guy. This guy. This guy. This guy. Right. Okay. And, all right. So you know, it's understand the etiquette and and what's what's good marketing, but also what's good etiquette. I mean, yeah. that's what we're talking about. It, it is. And so just know this. The real bottom line is as long as you're not killing your efficiency, as long as you're not killing your productivity doing this, right, you get right. more flies with honey. Right. So be a honey bucket. Right. Absolutely. Be, be a honey bucket and, and, and just pull it all in. I mean, you can get as creative as you want. You can get as complex as you want. You can get as edgy as you want. Just be honey. Okay. Okay. And 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 that, I can't remember if I told you guys this or talked about it. I, I probably haven't. But did I mention anything to you guys about the show, The Voice? No. I I used to be a big American Idol fan. Right. Just because I used to be a singer, a performer, and I like watching the people get up on stage. And I used to think the show was brilliant because they had Simon, the asshole, who was really controversial and always, you know, saying it like it is, with these other people that were different personalities and in-betweens, right? I haven't watched that show in years. I don't even know if it's still on. We, girlfriend and I just at random caught the first show of the first show of season five of The Voice, which I had always assumed was just a knockoff of uh, American Idol. Bunch of people trying to make a record album with four, you know, celebrities that judge their singing. Totally not the case. You guys should watch this show simply because it is what I consider to be the evolution of television. And it's something that I bet Google is going to take interest in, not for that show, but as they model web television. There is not one single negative comment made on that show. Ever. 
like it is a love fest. Everybody says positive things. The four celebrities are positive with each other. It is the most strange things to watch on television because you're like, there's no conflict. Even the people that are competing with each other love each other. There's no conflict. There's there's good competition with etiquette and morals. When the hell did that become a sellable show? What you know? Stars. Uh, in my mind, that's never that's never been a sellable show for network, right? But if you guys watch that, I don't. The only reason I watch it now is because I am pleasantly amazed every hour. I'm like, holy shit! Again, another hour where all they did was love each other and be positive. It it should scare the hell out of you know, I don't know. It it. it Here's the here's Jim. It is the most Christian show I've ever seen, <laughs> and it is not Christian. <laughs> they, they, they may have stolen it from Dancing with the Stars. Is that their model too? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. They all all the contestants like each other. Uh, uh, once in a while, when the when the judges have to judge uh, the gal who's on there right now with cancer. Uh, it's a struggle. They they do everything they can do to be supportive, encouraging, all of that, and truthful. Right, right. But not ever in a negative way. It's wow. Yeah, I but I think I have to, I don't. I've only seen little snippets of both shows because um, I don't watch TV. But I did see um, a bunch of The Voice uh, when I was in the thing at a uh, hotel a couple months ago, and I have to say that that while Dancing with the Stars is, it's, um, there's something very authentic about the voice. I don't know what it is. It's, there was something compelling about it. it those, the four people, the four celebrities that are currently there, and they're probably not the same ones that you were looking at, Kathleen. No. I but, th th we're, um, th I can't, I, th I think of his name. The lead dude from Maroon 5, who is... Adam uh, Levine. Adam Levine, who's, you know, hot right now, brilliant storyteller, writer. Yeah. Uh, Hello. Christina, Christina Aguilera, who's yeah. insane, incredible. Um, uh, uh, Hello. CeeLo Green, um, who is incredible producer, amazing guy. And Blake and Shelton. Blake Shelton. Yeah. I have just become a country fan because of Blake Shelton. <laughs> I hate country, actually. But I don't consider <laughs> what Blake does to be country. I mean, most country these days is really just rock with some twang. Um. What an incredible human being! This is it. I'm watching that show because there are four incredible human beings that inspire other human beings. Yeah. And each one of those people is a unique personality that always has something positive to say. Always. Well, and they're looking at taking those young talents and helping them improve. You know, si yeah, yes. That's pretty impressive. A 16-year-old boy got to stand in front of Christina Aguilera and say, you're really hot. I mean, that's just, <laughs> yeah, you know? And she just went, oh, sweetheart, you are beautiful. I mean, that's, it was the reaction and the hug and the the honesty. The, they were authentic. I think that's what blew me away, just purely authentic. And I, we've all seen celebrities on TV, and we know when they're reading a goddamn script. Yeah. So... I don't know, I just had to tell you guys that, that it, I think having watched the signals and what's changing over time, I'm so excited that the concept of authenticity, transparency, while the government may be bullshitting us about it, at least we're starting to see it happen through Google and shows that it seem to be doing it, whether they're doing it for ratings or not, who cares, it's happening, <laughs> you know, so it's like, it's just cool. And yeah. all of this is due to it, in my opinion, all of this is happening because we can communicate with each other. Glory. Or because we have to. Because we ha yeah, yeah, like this, like this, right? So, I, I don't know, it was just a big picture thought. Jim, do you have any other uh, questions? I, I didn't mean to... Nope, that took care of it. Thank you. Okay. Any, any other questions from anybody? Yeah, um... I I kind of faded out. Uh, I think I had asked, and then Jim I, you probably didn't hear me, but Jim picked it up. What about copyright issues with taking these snippets and oh. mims at mimes or mims or whatever they call them? Great, great question. Anything that is in 
so any celebrity stuff, you don't have to worry about. Short clips of, of uh, uh, shows that are up on YouTube, as long as it's on YouTube, you're okay. Oh, okay. Period. The end. If it's if it's already on YouTube, it's already met their license requirement. If it's gotten put up there and it gets pulled, then you know it didn't meet their license requirement and they just discovered it. All right. Um, memes. Most television shows, movie shows, love the memes. So they they want you taking screenshots. They want you using their stars and their promo images to do whatever the hell you want with it because that helps promote their brand. Okay. So use away. And, and the only time I've ever seen it become an issue is when somebody uses too long of a segment of something. Right? Okay. So the I'm, thinking, I'm thinking of, like, there's some YouTube videos on, say, uh, uh, smelting iron, for example. I mean, and these guys are pretty serious about the, the, the little video they put out. So if you take a snippet of that, uh, you wind up getting sued. But I, what I'm hearing you say, if it's short enough, it's not a problem. It, listen, if it's on YouTube and it's available to the public, they want you using it. Okay. You can take that whole thing and just embed it and write a post about it in Google+. Plus, Because okay. if they've got it monetized, which they should have, anybody that watches that, that sees the ads, could click on an ad, which makes them money. Okay. So That's they, how that works. Yeah, they want you spreading. This is how you, YouTube works because... <laughs> The reason networks are going to die is because anybody can take that show and share it anywhere with anyone. And the advertising that's on that show goes with it. I wondered about, because some of them have advertising at the beginning and some don't. It's, it's a, so there's a monetization setting. The, it's all about subscribers and views. You have enough subscribers on your YouTube channel. You now have more clout with Google. You can start telling them what ads you want, what ads you don't want. You get enough clout with Google, and you just say, here are the ads we're running. Screw you. All right? uh, before that, you monetize. And then when you monetize a video, you have options as to how in, how in the face your ads are going to be. With, with my videos, I can say, I want to show an ad before and an ad at the end. And then I can say, I'd like you to overlay things in the middle, right? So some of the videos we watch, you know, you, you'll know you start it, and it's like you can skip ad in five seconds at the beginning. Yeah. Right? That's pretty yeah. nice. That's, that's pretty nice. And then in the middle of it, they might, there might be an overlay that shows up in the lower third, right, down here. It says, buy this shit, buy that shit, blah, 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 blah. Okay. If you see that, then, the, then, then that person's opted for the full monetization. If you don't see that, then they only opted for the beginning and end monetization. All right. You can take that video now from YouTube, embed it on your own website. You can install a plugin that allows you to put your own advertisements on that YouTube video separate from what Google does. So that's a completely different way to monetize your YouTube video. If you want 100% control without having to get your fan base to the place where they'll let you have that control, you use other tools embedded on your own site. Now, when you do that, you have to drive the traffic to your site. Okay. So you, it's kind of a, you know, your choice. Cool. YouTube monetization, and this is why I say get over your camera fear. It's not even about good production. It's about persistent production. The shows that have made it so far are the shows that just keep going. Keep chugging and chugging and chugging. Because as long as what you're talking about isn't horribly garbage, you will get more subscribers. You just got to do it every week. We run the What the Fuck is SEO with Bobby Joe show, even though every time we do it I cringe because the production's terrible and I know we need to fix the show and I haven't had time to fix the show, but I don't care. Because I run my show every week, and every week we get more people to watch it every week. And that's all that matters. You know? For now, that's all that matters. I could have 150 what-the-fuck shows that all suck. But by the time I've got 150, I'll probably have several thousand subscribers to my channel. And that's all I need. Right? That's, that's, the, that's the power right there. So... I don't even know what the original topic was. What did you ask me? Well, <laughs> you asked me about copyright, wasn't it? Well, yeah, that was it. That's it. Because I fell, I fell off the screen about that point. I, a question on the screen. Uh, my, uh, I, my screen. I see all of you on the bottom thumbnails, but 
on my picture, I just have my uh, uh, image. I mean, I just have a picture. It's, Do I show up on yours? No, it's it's the Hangout. The, oh, okay. The, the, it's, this happened in our show earlier. It was doing yeah. that for Bobby Joe. So it's just the Hangout. You, okay. If you left and came back in, it might be better. But I think at this point we're going to wrap up anyway, right, guys? Yeah, yeah but I actually I want to run over my to-do list. Not a problem. Not a problem. Um, Jim, Walt, mm -hmm. if you guys have any other questions, great. If not, we can talk next week. Okay. okay that sounds good. All right. All right. I good. hope Sally feels better, Jim. Oh, yeah. Give her, give her your best. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Definitely. Hey, thanks, everybody. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Take care. Bye. All right. Back, Lane. Okay. Hang on okay. a second. Let me, let me, uh, let me end.